What's up YouTube? In this video, I will show you the Rocket League routine that helped me increase my 1v1 rank from Plat 1 all the way up to Diamond 3 in just a few months. I'm still not the greatest player to say the least, especially regarding my in-game decisions, but this routine made me a lot better. I cannot confirm how effective this is for higher ranked players, but I'm sure this routine can't make it worse. If you are a player that just started out, maybe some of the drills will be kinda tough for you, but you could just leave them out or replace them with similar drills that focus on the same area of the game. But overall, no matter what rank you are, if you wanna rank up efficiently, stay tuned for the rest of the video. Alright, so first I start with aerial control drills. Lethemir's giant rings map is first on the list. If you are on console, you unfortunately don't have that option, but you can start a private match instead, go into the pillars map and do figure eights. If you play on PC, definitely do Lethemir's Rings map though, because it's a lot of fun and because of the levels you can see your progress easier than doing figure eights in the pillars map. Try to challenge yourself in all these drills. For the Rings map, I sometimes do it without using Airwall, sometimes I spin throughout the whole course. If you get comfortable, try to go faster. If you did the map for 5-10 to 10 minutes with just dying a couple times, you should probably increase your speed. When you use a lot of boost, it forces you to practice boosting back or boosting down and that helps if you want to adjust your flight path when trying to read the back wall while going for a double touch. If you want to see a perfect example of how to do the map, check out Forky's run. He pretty much doesn't let go of boost or air roll for the entire map. Next on the list is the Devo Custom Training Pack. The codes for all the training packs you can find in the description by the way. In this one I try to go for double touches to challenge my back wall reads as well as my redirects. I have not scored a redirect like that in an actual game, but I noticed that I am way more confident going for aerials in general. Use a fast aerial for takeoff and rotate your car into the ball when you are about to hit it so your car stays stable and you get more power on your hit. For some of the shots it's really hard to set up the double touch, then it's also fine to just go for the redirect instead. For all the drills I would recommend to not practice one thing for more than 20 minutes, especially if you are not getting it down. That can frustrate you and cause you to give up and not try again another day. If after 10 minutes I can't really do something, I try to accept that my skill is not quite there yet and I try again tomorrow or I try to do something similar that is a little easier. The last aerial control drill is the Realistic Air Dribbles Pack. This one gives you a variety of different setups to start off aerial solo plays. No matter if it's double touches, flip resets or air dribbles, you need to practice a variety of setups so that you can actually implement those moves into your game. For those of you saying that practicing fancy plays like that won't help ranking up at the lower ranks, it's important to get confident doing those moves and that requires doing them a bunch of times and that means that you're going to mess up some of those times. Plus, if you've been practicing air dribbles for example, more basic wall plays, like wall shots, will also feel easier to you. I would just recommend doing them in once games first, so that you can practice your recoveries before implementing them into your twos and threes games. That way your teammates won't be mad at you and everybody's happy. Let's move on to the ground control and shooting section of the routine. I start with the workshop map dribble 2 overhaul while absolutely smashing the ball into the goals at the end of each level. The fuck? This helps your flicks in overall dribbling. Alternatively, you can do Lethemir's dribbling course. That one is a lot more difficult than the first one, and if you try to flick at the checkpoints, this happens. Yay! Come on, man. So, I would recommend Lethemir's dribbling map for really focusing on control while dribbling and dribble to overhaul if you also want to practice flicks. If you are on console, you will have to stick to practicing flicks and dribbling in free play. Next I hop into free play and practice setting up different kinds of shots, like hook shots, bounce dribbles into power shots or bounce dribbles into flicks. Be creative and try to imagine a defender that is about to challenge you at any moment, so be ready to change the direction of the ball. Choose an approach that doesn't go straight to goal, that allows you to keep an eye on the shadowing defender in a real match and also helps aligning your car with the ball and the goal for maximum power. The last drill I do is a custom training pack for ground shots and power shots. My favorite one I think is the shooting consistency one, but ground shots and power shot practice are also really good as well. 
Approach the ball as fast as you can and only go to the next shot once you absolutely bank that shot. Use air roll for some of the shots to get more power. It isn't necessary to use air roll for all the shots, sometimes your car is already aligned perfectly and you don't have to use air roll at all. That's all the drills I do, but you don't have to do exactly those drills or those training packs. I'm just showing them as an example. If something gets too repetitive or too boring, feel free to switch up the drills, because in the end it's still about having fun. I would recommend not focusing on only one mechanic as you can see, because that won't make you a well-rounded player. And it's really important to be a well-rounded player because otherwise you're going to be easy to read. And if you're easy to read, you're going to do terrible in the next part of the routine, which is 1v1. Yep, 1v1, it can be tilting, especially if your kickoff is ass like mine, but they are the best practice for challenging, fake challenging, shadowing, and of course to practice all the offensive moves that you are working on in the first part of the routine. What's really important in my opinion when you play once is that you have to stay positive and don't let your opponent or your own mistakes get to your head. Try turning off chat for your 1v1 games and see if that has an impact on your performance or your mental condition. Moving on to 2v2 or 3v3. I play until I lose a match or until I play the game where I know I made a bunch of mistakes. Then I save the replay, watch it and count and categorize each mistake. I did that with this Excel list using these mistake categories. Wow! Analyzing your games like that helps to identify what areas of your game you have to focus on to improve the quickest way possible. This might be the most important step of the routine. Depending on which mechanical errors happen the most, put more time in for the respective part of the mechanics routine. After analyzing a game, I continue playing, but I really try to focus on my decision making and positioning in the next couple of games. The more you do that, the more you become aware of what you are actually doing on the field. If you do this every day, you should see clear improvements in no time. Alright, that's all. Thank you so much for watching, give a like if you found the video helpful and please consider subscribing to the channel. That would encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. Leave a comment whether or not you would try out this routine yourself and how you would modify it. Have a great day and take care.